So I created a Twitter account. We all either created one or logged into it. Uh, and so I created this account. Some of you have told me that you've already gotten a follower. Unfortunately, it's going to be a spam follower. Because if you just created your account, you have very little to offer people. But the spammers are running their spam software 24 hours a day. And they can create a little app that searches for new usernames. Uh, so if you already got a follower, unfortunately, it's probably a spammer. Now, do you care about who follows you? That's going to be up to you. If you suddenly get 10 spam followers, I might feel like, well, if I'm connected with spammers, people are not going to follow me. Uh, or you might not care. Uh, in the beginning, I personally cared who followed me, and I would go in and start to delete or you know, block the people, the spammers that were following me. And at a certain point, I stopped, because then there was a critical mass of real people following me that would offset the fake accounts. And Twitter tries its best to deal with the fake accounts but because anyone can create one relatively easy, as we saw, there's, there's fake accounts, and they're going to follow you. And if you'd like to, you can worry about dealing with the fake accounts, or you can just simply move on and follow our techniques about getting real followers. I'll show you how to block accounts and how to unfollow and all of that, of course. But we just created this account. Let's get used to the anatomy of what Twitter looks like. And you can use Twitter on a laptop, on a desktop, on a mobile device. Um, all the things you can do on a desktop, you can do on a mobile device with a little variation. And so here on the desktop version, on the top left we've got home screen, moments screen, notification screen, messages screen. Wherever you're at, if you wandered off somewhere else, you can always go back to your home screen there. The home screen is where you're going to see whatever you've tweeted and whatever other people have tweeted that you have followed. I have followed, I'm following five accounts. So whatever those five <coughs> accounts are tweeting, I will see their stuff, their tweets, on the home screen. There's the, um, the Padres, I followed them and I see that tweet. I followed Fitness Magazine, there's that tweet right there. Uh, I follow NBC San Diego, there's their tweet. So everything that I followed will show up here on the home screen. Very similar to Facebook. All of the stuff that my friends and family post on Facebook, I see it on, that, on the home timeline, the wall, whatever they call it nowadays. But notice I also see stuff of accounts I did not follow. I don't remember following Liberty Zavala. I did not remember clicking the follow button for Liberty. Right above it, it says NBC San Diego retweeted Liberty. What a retweet is, is their terminology for a share. You're on Facebook, you like something that someone posted, you want more people to see it, more of your connections to see it, you share it on Facebook. Twitter has the same thing, their terminology is a retweet. So if you've heard of a retweet, don't know what it is, now you do. It's taking someone else's tweet and you sharing it to your followers. That's not bad. You don't need permission. It's not copyrighted. You're not, it's not frowned upon. This is social media. Social. Think of it in terms of my company. I'm going to tweet a photo of an amazing cupcake and a link for sale. My seven followers see it. Potentially seven people could buy it. What's 1% of seven? Less than one. Let's round it up. One. One person out of my seven could buy that cupcake. But what if one of those seven followers has a thousand followers? And that one person retweeted my delicious cupcake to her 1,000 followers. Now my cupcake photo has reached 1,007 people. The seven that I have followers and the 1,000 that that person has following them. So retweets. <coughs> retweets. Sharing your... Getting your tweets shared to more people. I want that. We'll talk about how to get that, of course. But what I'm seeing here is I followed San Diego, NBC7, and they shared one of the tweets of one of their reporters. So now more people are seeing that tweet. I guess Liberty's on, on the scene at this event. She tweeted this. San Diego7, her employer, then retweeted it. More people saw it. So the timeline, the home screen, will show you everything that your, that your people are tweeting that you followed and everything that they have retweeted. 
I don't believe you can turn that off. I think that's just a common thing nowadays for Twitter. You can't turn off retweets. I have to look for it on the settings if you don't want that, but if, if, it's, if you don't want that, it is something that you live with because I want that. I want my tweets to reach more people. And so, um, the, uh, the other things that you'll see on the timeline are promoted tweets. I never follow Walgreens, and it doesn't say at the top that it was a retweet. Also at the top here, notice, about auto insurance. I didn't follow them, and I don't care about auto insurance. This is the promoted stuff, the ads. You, you see this more often, you can't get away from it, even if I turned off the button that says show me Twitter based on tailored tweets, you, you can't get away from ads. Most websites are full of ads, social media is full of ads. It's just the way it is now, unfortunately. They have to make money. And so if you see a tweet you don't recognize, it's an ad. If you care about it, you might actually tweet. I mean, you might actually click it and buy the auto insurance. If you, re if you really don't like the, that ad, you have a button that, that often says dismiss. But again, you can keep dismissing all day long, you're still going to see ads. Uh, Twitter at the moment is not so egregious v with ads. I think Facebook is much worse with ads. You see them on the side, you see them in the middle of your post, you see them all over the place. Twitter possibly one day might be as bad as Facebook. Unfortunately, I have to be pessimistic and say it probably will be as bad as Facebook because Facebook is the largest social network in the world. They're doing something right. One and a half billion people worldwide. And Facebook, like Nike, like Coca-Cola, like Chipotle, like all of these companies are publicly traded, which means they're on the stock market. You can buy stock in Nike. You can buy stock in AT&T. You can buy, buy stock in Disney. Therefore, as an investor, I care that Disney makes money, so I make money on my investment. Facebook is a publicly traded company now. You can buy stock in Facebook. And when Facebook does well, my investment does well. And one of the ways Facebook does well is with a lot of ads. So honestly and cynically, I have to say Facebook doesn't care about you unless you're an investor. Twitter doesn't care about you unless you're an investor, because you can buy shares on Twitter as well. And at the moment, Twitter shares are doing really bad. Really bad. And so they're looking at their competitor, Facebook. What's Facebook doing? We've got to do what's Facebook. And I personally don't like that a lot. Full disclosure, I don't like Facebook. I hardly use Facebook for personal. For business, I love it. I love Facebook for business because for clients it works amazing. Personal, I hardly log on. I don't care what my friends and family are posting on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Google+. I'm on these other networks. And I don't like that I'm seeing Twitter becoming more and more like Facebook. If I wanted to be on Facebook, I'd be on Facebook. And I don't like Facebook. So, you're going to see ads. You're going to see other things to be more Facebook-like. I really hope they don't uh, go the full Facebook route. But they have to uh, follow their investors. And full disclosure, I'm a Twitter <laughs> investor. I have bought stock in Twitter and I'm not happy with the stock price. But I like Twitter. I still use it. I have fun on Twitter. And for business, it's also very valuable, as we'll talk about it in this class. Because you might not care about that ad there about auto insurance. But you can post an ad on Twitter for your company and get it found by more people. I have zero followers. And if I invest in paid tweets, it will reach suddenly many more people as little as a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. Of course, if you spend a hundred dollars on Twitter, a thousand dollars on Twitter, of course you'll reach more people. Just like in the real world, if I, if I uh, paid for 50 flyers, I reach 50 people. If I paid for 5,000 flyers, I reach more people. So all of social media nowadays, there's the free and there's the paid versions of it. And you may be morally a, morally objective to morally you may find it morally objectionable to pay for any of this stuff that's fine you will be able to use all of these social networks for free and reach an audience but it is the harder method 
And in this class, I'm talking about the harder method. I'm talking about the free stuff. I don't want to pay for tweets. I don't want to pay on Facebook. I don't want to pay on Pinterest. You will reach more of an audience when you pay. But we'll be talking about the free stuff. And part of the free way to get more followers, because remember, we want followers, that's an audience. Part of the way to get more followers is I follow accounts. I followed Fitness Magazine, I followed NBC, I followed Verizon, I followed whatever, Martha Stewart. One possible way to get followers is for you to follow. So we'll talk here, ways to get followers. If we already established followers are important, not just for your ego, but for your bottom line, ways to get followers. One of the ways is follow accounts to get follow backs. <coughs> if I follow an account, I might get a follow back. There's another hedge word there. Might. Possibly. Maybe. Just because you followed a thousand accounts doesn't mean you're suddenly going to get a thousand followers. You might get 20. You might get 200. You might get 700. I don't know. It depends on a lot of factors. If I follow Martha Stewart on Twitter, am I going to get a follow back? Maybe, but probably not. Do I have something to offer Martha Stewart's Twitter account? So this gets into the chicken or the egg thing, which came first. I'm going to try to follow accounts. Some of them will follow me, but most of them won't, especially if I just started my account with zero tweets, and I'm a generic egg, and no biography, no tweets, no biography, no logo, nothing to offer people to follow me. So don't go on a follow spree yet. You don't have anything to offer a follower. That's why you want to add your, your photo there and your background picture there and add a biography before starting to try to get followers, which comes first. I recommend as we're going to do right now, we want to set up our profile properly and we want to tweet a little bit before trying to get followers. I have zero followers, so if I start to tweet right now, no one is listening to me. You might say, well, I'm wasting my time then. Why am I going to tweet? I have no followers. Why are you going to get followers if you have no tweets? That's a catch-22. I want more followers. I get followers with tweets. I have no followers. No one's seeing my tweets. To break that vicious cycle, you're going to build your profile, tweet a little bit, and then try to get followers, because then you have something to show for it to get a follow. Let's click on your egg icon on the top right, or if you did put your icon, you'll see it on the top right. Click on your profile icon at the top right, and click on View Profile. If someone were to go to twitter.com slash Victor Bakery, they will see this. Nothing. Nothing of importance to follow you. No logo, no biography, no tweets, nothing of importance to follow you. On the right side, click Edit Profile. <coughs> if I had a big old picture to put as my header photo, I should put it. What to put there? I don't know. Check the competition, check what they're putting, get inspired to see what they're putting. Are they putting a photo of their front facade of their business? Are they putting a nice, big, beautiful photo of their product? Are they putting a photo of their happy customers? Whatever your competition is doing, see what they're doing. If you like it, do something, do a variation of it. But I need a photo here to catch attention. Remember what Mashable had up there? They had just a whimsical graphic up there with drawings. CNN had like a headline of, of something. Jim Carrey had him with smiling fans. Our company has a picture of a keyboard. You know, there's no right or wrong answer what you put up there, but put something up there that is relates to your business that makes you stand out. Because you heard the you heard the expression, uh, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Your first impression is someone visits <coughs> your profile, nothing of importance. Why would I come back and follow a day later? You want a profile photo at some point? You can change your full name right there. 
You can change your app name later in their under settings. They should combine the two places, but you have to change your app name if you want to back on the settings. Bio and location. You have a spot here to write a biography of 160 characters. So a little bit more than a tweet. You have here a short little paragraph to write about your company. And if you take the SEO class, we talk about the importance of keywords. When you search for something online, you are looking for a uh, pet walker. Let's say you need a pet walker. And you're going to search pet walker in San Diego. You're going to search affordable pet walker in San Diego. That's how you use Google. That's how you use Bing. That's how you search. Google, uh, Twitter has a built-in search here, too. Whenever you search in Twitter, you're searching only in Twitter. It doesn't go out to the rest of the world. So if you put tweets into Twitter, if you put a biography into Twitter of these keywords of people, of what they might search, you might get found. Then you might get followed, and you build your followers. You have more followers, you have more of an audience possibly to sell to. I'm not saying put in literal keywords here. I got Victor's Bakery. I'm not saying put in bakery, cupcake, San Diego. I'm not saying that. I'm saying put in a real biography with real human readable words and sentences that has your keywords added in smartly. In the SEO class, we do this more in detail, but here's an example. Family-owned bakery in the heart of East Lake. California, because I think there's one in Michigan. We are we specialize in healthy versions of classic goodies. Okay, I'm hitting those keywords. Someone is searching on Google, someone is searching on Yahoo. East Lake Bakery. There's some of those keywords. Someone is searching for healthy cupcakes or healthy goodies or healthy uh, cakes. Right, healthy. Family owned. Someone that cares about a family owned business rather than a big conglomerate company. I've got that keyword. This is an art and a science. That's the SEO class thinking in terms of how are you going to get found, how are you going to get ranked on the search engines, and SEO applies all over the place, even on YouTube, even in Twitter, even on Facebook. If you don't have an idea for this right now, start thinking about this and you'll add it later. If this is not perfect right now, you can edit it as many times as you want. But when someone goes up here on Twitter and searches for family bakery, I've got those keywords that I can get found by location. Uh, there's some suggestions here. I could take the suggestion and this will be useful later on when you do a search of local Twitter users. Twitter is local. And I want people to buy my cupcakes. But I sell my cupcakes locally. Therefore, I want people in San Diego to buy my cupcakes, not people in Cebu even though my tweets will reach all over the world. So if I put a location, the people that really could come to my local business could find me. Website. Again, on my website is where I have my order form to order that birthday cake. I can't sell the cake directly on Twitter. So I'll put my company's website. And it doesn't have to literally be your website. It could be my Etsy shop, my eBay, my Kickstarter, anything. This could even be a link back to my Facebook. It'll let me do that. This is any link. And this is a little bit more advanced, but have you heard of the concept of a landing page? If you haven't, let me make a note here. This is advanced. This is advanced marketing landing page. Remember to turn off your cell phones, please. 
landing page. A special page on your website you direct traffic to. Well, that sounds like any other kind of page on a website. What's special about it is you direct traffic through to it usually from an email or a tweet or a Pinterest pin or a radio ad. Um, I'm not directing people directly to victor.com. I'm directing vic uh, people to victor.com slash coupon 20. That's a landing page. That's a page I created on my website that you can only get to in a special way. Via a tweet, so follow me on Twitter. Via a pin on Pinterest, so follow me on Pinterest. Via my blog, so subscribe to my blog. So it's sort of like exclusive content on your website that you can only get to if you're in if you're in the know, if you're a VIP, and simply follow me on Twitter for exclusive coupons you won't see anywhere else. People ask me, do I need to be on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest? And I said earlier, short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Because I want people from Twitter, I want to guide people on Twitter to that coupon. That was the landing page from Twitter. I might have victor.com slash sale 99, or you can call these things anything, cup cake sale march. That's the landing page from Facebook. I could have as many of these things as I want. Again, this is advanced. How do you do it? I don't have time to talk about it. Take other classes. Uh, but I could have another one, you know, gibberish, and that's coming from Pinterest. That's a landing page. The only way to get these to these pages, because these pages are not on the menu of my website. There's no way to get to these pages unless you, it comes from an email, it comes from a tweet, somewhere special. Landing page. So, on my biography on Twitter, I could create a link to one of my landing pages. That way I can tell how effective is my Twitter account. I've got 100 followers, but is it really working? If you see your statistics and see that a lot of people are coming to your landing page that you only have set on Twitter, that's one indicator that you're effective on Twitter. If you check the stats of your site and you're not getting any hits from your cupcake sale, that means Facebook's not working for some reason. You're not getting traffic from Facebook. I'm spending all this time and effort on, on Pinterest and I'm not getting any traffic. I can either decide to then abandon Pinterest and focus on what's working or try harder on Pinterest to get more hits from Pinterest. I could put it in the bio biography here if I also have space. Follow the link for exclusive coupons. And then the link is right here, which is bakery.com slash Twitter VIP. This requires that you create the page on your website. We have no time to talk about that. It's advanced. But write that down and think about it, and whoever does your website and such, get them to do landing pages. That's how you also make Twitter and social media work for you, guiding people directly to what you want them to. Because that billboard that's up on, up on the wall and that flyer that's on the door, that doesn't guide people as much as it could. And here it could be, you could guide people very directly. You have a little bit of theme color design here. Not a lot of colors to choose from, notice, but you can put some colors here. If you know your color formula, you can put it there. No time to talk about it in this class, you have to look it up. But if your company has a specific shade of red, it's got a color formula. Put your color formula there, and it'll be your red, not this generic red. What is that exactly? Right here. When someone visits your account, you will, they will see red color accents all over your account. Birthday is optional, and it doesn't really make sense for a business, but I suppose you could put the founding of your business. It doesn't have any meaning right now. I think when it's your birthday, Twitter sends you a nice birthday tweet. But uh, probably at one point, that birthday will also be uh, to market you a better tweet when it's your birthday and send you a tweet about this great product you want. 
so I won't put anything there, but you can if you want. Save changes on the top right. And it's going to keep nagging me. Confirm your email. Now that's a fake email, so I can't confirm it. But eventually you want to confirm your email. You're going to check your email account. It'll say, welcome to Twitter. Click here. You want to confirm your email address to get the full features of Twitter. This is a fake account that I just created for learning. I'm not going to confirm it, and I'm going to show you later on how to delete the account. So part of the way to break the chicken or the egg, the vicious cycle about getting followers, is edit your profile like this. It's incomplete. I want to complete it as much as I can. The other part of the foundational stuff is to start to tweet. Any questions so far before we do that? Yes. How, big, how big exactly is the, uh, the header picture? Mm, I don't have it memorized, but what we can do is uh, Twitter cover photo size. So I'll just do a search here. It seems to be 1500 by 500. Okay. Basically a rectangle. And they change this sometimes, so it seems that the current version of it is that size. 1,500 wide, 500 tall. Alright, so for tweeting, here on this, on your profile screen, you haven't tweeted anything yet. We have two options. We can use a pre-made tweet as your first tweet, or you can have a unique tweet. The very first tweet that was ever sent is this one right here. Just setting up my Twitter. That was the very first tweet in April 2006 or whenever, 2006. Uh, that was the very first tweet. So if you'd like to keep that tradition alive, you can just click Tweet. And now your Twitter account tweeted, just setting up my Twitter. Uh, so that's your very first tweet. Or if you choose, you can write something else on the little box. you always have a way to tweet when you're logged into Twitter. You always have a button on the top right corner. Let's go ahead and click that button on the top right. Compose a new tweet. What's happening? Here's how you attach a picture or a photo. I'm sorry, a picture or a video. You can also attach a poll. This is new. They've added this within the last six months or so. You can add a poll to ask your followers a question. So, I am a bakery. I can, I can uh, ask a question about what should our cupcake of the month be this month? And ask chocolate chip cupcake, vanilla cupcake, uh, Rocky Road cupcake. And then I get followers to, to vote. I think you don't need followers to vote. I think anyone on Twitter can vote. Uh, I usually don't do polls that often. I need to learn about them a little bit more. It's kind of new. They seem fun and useful if you've got followers, because if you have no followers, you'll have zero votes. But I think uh, non-followers can also vote. And then here's a spot for you to tweet something, and you've got 140 characters space. So let's say this is our first tweet after the first tweet, and we will say anything we want, of course. Happy to finally be on Twitter. The thing about social media, in my opinion, is that there are two facets of it, two faces of it, and they're both legitimate. One I would call the frivolous face of social media, and one I would call the serious face of social media, and they're both legitimate. People use Twitter to meet friends and, and talk with family and have fun and share cool and funny and interesting and weird things on Twitter. That's the frivolous aspect, and it's perfectly legitimate. You can use Twitter for that purpose. I like Twitter. I use Twitter. I like to do live tweeting TV shows. I watch a TV show. I've got a computer here on Twitter, and I'm tweeting with everyone that's also watching that TV show. It's fun. That's also a tactic for business, which I'll talk about later. But the other side of Twitter is the, is the serious aspect, which is you're using Twitter to try to build an audience, followers, 
so that then you can make sales or whatever you're trying to do. So always think about what am I going to tweet for the benefit of my followers or potential followers. Someone sees that and honestly, who cares? Great, you're on Twitter, so I've, I'm, I'm, I've been on it for five years. Well, whenever you tweet, think about what can benefit your followers or potential. So I'm saying, happy to be finally on Twitter. Follow us for exclusive coupons or content or sales or whatever for exclusive coupons and mouth-watering photos. So I don't know what you're going to write, but you think about it in terms of what will entice people to follow you on Twitter, on Facebook, on Pinterest, <coughs> on Snapchat, everywhere. Again, anything we talk about today, we can apply to just about every other network with variations. Happy to finally be on Twitter, follow us for some coupons and mouth and photos. So I mentioned it earlier, but what's the brand new language <coughs> that's taking over the world that we're all going to be speaking in a few years? Nope. That's a social network? Language. What's the new language that everyone's using? Especially the younger people. Emoji. Getemoji.com. You know, those little icons of the smiley faces and uh, the little face with swirly eyes and the little face with the dollar symbol and uh, the, the little faces of kissing each other and the little alien. All of that emoji, that thing when you send people text messages, instead of saying, I love you, you just put the heart, right? Emoji. You can go to getemoji.com, and you can get the emoji here, copy and paste. You know, I can select that, copy it, paste it here. And now people on Twitter will see a little emoji. What's the point of that? Again, it depends on the voice of your company. If I'm a CPA, and I'm putting these funny, cute little emojis that doesn't put a lot of um, faith in the, my abilities as a professional. But if I write, I'm a CPA, and I'm writing, um, don't forget, don't forget tax time is coming, everyone. Make sure you do your taxes. And then I get over here the little dollar emoji. That could be. There's so many of them. Uh, symbols. You can search, of course. Dollar. Right there. Banknote. So here we go. So let's say I'm a CPA and I'm saying, don't forget to do your taxes April 18th. Dollar symbol. So this is optional, of course, but I'm just bringing it up that this is very common nowadays. This shows that you know how to use Twitter. This is kind of what um, ca catches attention if you don't have a picture to post, uh, to attach to your tweet. Maybe an emoji can also get the, the point across. And over here on getemoji.com, you can search, you know, 200 of them and just copy them and paste them into your tweet. And there you can reach your audience in a different kind of way. Question. I still haven't figured out how to get to where you are with the media and On the top right corner, you're going to have a button that says Tweet. So think in terms about what, uh, what your followers uh, would care about. Simply saying, hello world, here I am. Not enough. Why? What is, what's in it for me? What's in it for me as a follower? So let's just post a very basic text tweet for the moment, and then we'll look at other kinds of tweets. And I did add an emoji here. Just copy and paste. And tweet. So now all my zero followers saw my tweet. Again, am I going to waste my time tweeting to no one? In the beginning, yes. In the beginning, you're going to tweet to no one to have something to show for it when someone goes to your account to click the follow button. Because remember, if
if someone is searching for cupcakes and they see my tweet, there's going to be a button on my profile when someone visits my profile, follow. I want people to follow. I don't have a cover photo, I don't have a logo, <coughs> I don't have a bio, I don't have any tweets. No followers. <coughs> as you edit this stuff and as you tweet, it'll entice people to follow you. So you will be tweeting to, to the void, to no one, in the beginning. And I'm going to say, so related to these followers, 3 to 5 to 10 tweets directed to no one. as a starting point. So actually, let me back up. That should be step zero. You want content for before anyone will think about following you. Three tweets, five tweets, ten tweets, whatever you want. There's no limit to how many times you can tweet. We saw that uh, that account had, you know, 180,000 tweets. I forget how many I have, but I've also got like 20,000 tweets. Um, there's no limit. And you want to tweet something to entice people. And not just like, today I had breakfast. Went to the bank. You know, people have, sometimes people have a negative opinion of social media in that it's so frivolous. People posting about what they did today and such. Who cares? But as a business, remember, there's the frivolous side, which is totally legitimate. And then there's the business side, which is totally legitimate. And you can mix the two. In my company, of my web design company, you saw there that I threw in a photo of a, of a used candy wrapper and I asked my audience, what's your favorite snack while you're coding? That's to build that social interaction. It's not always about hire us now, we're having a sale on web design. We're being social. So I've tweeted that. Notice it converted the emoji from the plain black and white one into the colorful Twitter one. I'm going to click again at the top right corner, Tweet, and this time I'm going to add a picture. I've got a few sample pictures that we can work with um, built into the computer. Let me show you how to add a picture. Click Media on your new upload window right here on the left side you have under libraries you have pictures we have a few pictures for you to borrow obviously you really want your own pictures on social media I'll sh mention about what to do if you don't have any original pictures because you really need to post original content as much as possible I'll expand on that in a moment but first, let's click on pictures. So on the left side, you'll see libraries, pictures, and then sample pictures. I'm just going to take any one of these pictures. Let's say koala. I'll click koala, and I'll click open. I started with 140 characters, and now I have 116. Math majors, help me out. How many did that take up? 24. 20-something. <laughs> it took 20-something characters for that picture. So I have less to say. The good news is I can attach three more pictures and they will not take up any more space. 116. 116. Four, up to four pictures. It'll make a little album of four pictures. People will see them and they can click on it to view it larger. But I can attach up to four pictures. 16. I mean 20. Four characters, 24 characters will be used up. You might not want to put all four, you might want to put two, you might want to put one. It's up to you. You won't know what works until you try it. A lot of what this social media is, and the big secret of a company that does social media for a client is, in the beginning they have to try everything. They have to try many different things and they have to see what sticks. That works in the real world too. Coca-Cola doesn't just sell Coca-Cola. They sell Powerade, they sell some, you know, organic tea, they sell, um, you know, so many beverages to reach the audience. They want to sell their products to everyone, but not everyone wants, you know, 40 milligrams of, of a sugar drink. They want instead a Powerade to work out, which still has 40 milligrams of sugar. They want a tea, 
because it's healthy and it says natural on the on the front, which means nothing. Uh, and that has also 40 milligrams of, of sugar. So the point is, uh, if you do this yourself or if you hire a company that does social media, that's a social media marketing firm. If you follow a comp, if you hire a company to do social media for you, they're going to try a variety of things within a defined context to try to reach an audience. And they're going to check, this tweet worked, this tweet didn't, this one really worked, this one went viral. So that's giving me an idea of what I could possibly do further on Twitter. I'm just going to put one at the moment. I'm going to share a picture. I can still type text here. Notice I can't add a poll anymore. It's kind of either or. Um, but okay, I'm going to tweet this. What's in it for people? I'm going to say um, say hello everyone to Carrie the Koala, our mascot. So some amount of text. I'm down to 63 characters now with a picture. And um, again, I'm not always saying buy this, buy that, subscribe, follow. I'm putting frivolous stuff here and there, and that's perfectly fine. You have to figure out your ratio of fun stuff to sell to salesmanship stuff. The, the frivolous stuff to the serious stuff. You have to figure that out. If you attach a photo, then it might ask you who's in the photo. And with, with the point of this is if you've got other people in your company, let's say I've got the main company account, Victor's Bakery, but I've also got my chefs, uh, my bakers in the kitchen. They've also got their own Twitter accounts. And let's say one of my bakers, she's managed to, to build an audience of 500 followers. And I just started off and I've got one. If I link another Twitter account to my photo, that could get me more followers because I've linked my photo to a more popular account. And that account that has more popularity could see this tweet and then say, oh, I like to follow uh, Janet the, the chef and I also will follow her employer, the, the company. So here you would be typing in the name of um, you know, the name of a person on Twitter, and it'll pop up. Do you mean this Victor, this Victor, this Victor? Well, there's lots of Victors on Twitter. So if you know the actual, because that's the full name. If I actually know the username, that's how you're going to find people on Twitter easier. This full name, that's my middle name, but that's not me. That's not me. That's me, because my, you know, my, Username and there's only one username in the world where that. Means. See, I beat this guy. He got he had to the 1972 there, but I got mine first, so he's that. He had to be 66, so I got it. But we can all be victim and accomplices. So when you're trying to find someone on Twitter, it's better that you know their username because that's the unique one. So let's say this was a photo of the of all of the people in the kitchen. And I say, say hi to everyone in the, on the team. And the other people on the team also have a Twitter account. I can add people to that photo so that it reaches more people. So I'll tweet that. So three or five or ten tweets, let's say I'm doing another one, let's just say uh, sale this Saturday. Don't write this one yet, but let's say I, I, I tweet something. One of the big uh, complaints that people have about Twitter is that you cannot go back and edit your tweets. And that's not a mistake, I am sailing this Saturday. <laughs> no, it is. Uh, it's sale. I've got a sale this Saturday. I'm going to sell something this Saturday. Oops, I misspelled it. There's no way for you to edit your tweets at the moment. It's one of the things that people keep asking Twitter for 10 years. Let us edit our tweets. 
And when I first got onto Twitter in 2009, this was really annoying. I had crafted an amazing tweet, I tweeted it out there to the world, and I looked foolish because I misspelled something. So either live with it, or on all of your tweets you have this, these three little buttons. You can click for these options, delete tweet. You can delete the tweet and tweet it again. There's no edit at the moment. On Facebook, it used to be that you couldn't edit what you post. Then they made it that you can edit something within five minutes. And then they made it now you can edit something whenever you want. Twitter still doesn't let you edit your tweets. I have come to live with it. That's just the character of Twitter. That's fine. I made a mistake. Either I live with it or I delete it and try again. For a lot of us, that's very annoying. The only recourse at the moment is to delete it and fix it. Sure, you want to delete? Yes. And then I'll tweet it for real. Question. Message? Yes. Right now, everything that we're tweeting is completely public. Anyone that searches on Twitter could find my tweets, and that's what I want as a, um, as a business. I want my tweets to be found by everyone public. But sometimes I need to chat or message with people on Twitter privately, and that's what this direct messaging thing is. I'm sending this tweet to a specific person on Twitter which is also related to the top menu over here, Messages. Everything that I'm tweeting is public, but if I want to tweet with people privately, it's under Messages. If I tweet and I have media, I can attach a picture or a video. If I had a video file here to show you, I guess here <clears throat> isn't supported. Okay, not every kind of video can be uploaded. So I, I tried to add a video, it didn't accept the video. If you're on a mobile device, it has a way for you to, to record a video directly on your mobile device. So you want to look into getting the free Twitter app and then using it mobile. Because on mobile, I've got a camera right here. I want to take a photo right now of my product and tweet it. It's so direct. Here on the website, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the desktop computer and I need to somehow get my photo off of my phone onto my computer or tweet the photo directly from my phone or the video. And so I can attach a few bits of media here, but here's another way that you can add more multimedia because you do want to be visually interesting. This sale this Saturday is probably gonna zoom by people because when they are logged in and they are looking at their home screen they're looking at lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff and if I just zoom by like this I see things standing out such as Han Solo and I want to go look at that but I see something of a bit, little bit of text and I might not notice it because there's a lot to look at <coughs> so you do want to add multimedia let's say you've got something you want to share. You can also <coughs> share links. There's no button that says share link. There's add media, poll, but there's no link. So you can share links in two ways. One way is, let's say, click here for VIP coupons. And then I type the address, http colon slash slash victorsbakery.com slash coupon 99. So I can add links to my tweets by typing the address. And I don't have to have the short version. Coupon 99 dash march dash 16 dash new. Uh, no, notice my character count, it's 89, and it doesn't keep decreasing. At a certain point, your address, whatever the length of your address, will shorten down to a certain level, like 19 characters or something. So I can add a really long address, and it won't take up a lot of my space. 
Every subsequent address, however, does also take up some amount of space at a certain point. See that? So it was 89 and it went down to 64. So every new address will take up some amount of characters, about 19 or so. But it's not going to take your huge address like that and eat up all your space. So one way to share a link is simply type it in or copy and paste it. Here's another way. Let's all do this. Uh, we're currently looking at Twitter. Open a new tab. So either you've got a little plus symbol to open a new tab or you've got a little sort of like blank tab symbol. Just open a new tab. And then let's go to pmdinteractive.com slash blog. Let's go to my company's website. We've got a blog. We've got articles that we publish free advice or tips or whatever. Let's say you've got a website, you've got a blog, you've got a product. You want to share a link to that product on Twitter. I'll show you here in a concrete way. Let's go to my blog, my website's blog, PMD Interactive, sorry about there's a C there, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. Press enter, you'll see our blog. And there's an article there, how to use Peach. Let's say you wanted to share this on Twitter. Do you see on most websites nowadays there's something that says share on Twitter, tweet this, post it on Pinterest, pin it. Most modern websites have some way for you to share to social media. If your website doesn't, you need to research how to activate <coughs> that. Because if you've got a lot of great stuff on your website, but there's no easy way for someone to share it on their Facebook. It's stuck on your website. Yes, savvy people will go to the top here and select the address and right-click and copy and go to Twitter and right-click and paste. But isn't it a lot easier to simply find what you want online, click the tweet button, and it should pop up right here. It's automatically, Twitter's automatically going to share that for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click, notice there's the pin it button, I'm going to click on the article to actually view it. Because again, this is the article I want to share on Twitter. That's the address. I'm not going to remember that address. I can copy and paste the address, but notice the article has a way to tweet it directly, where a way to share it on Google Plus directly, or more networks. So check your website how to activate social sharing. This is what people do a lot now. You may have never have done this, but hundreds of millions of people use Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and all of that. And they find something cool on online and they and they click that tweet button and it goes off to their friends and family. You just got free advertising. You got someone that had 200 followers to share your stuff. I've only got seven followers, but someone went to my site, found something cool, and shared it to their 200 followers. And maybe one of those followers of a follower has 2,000 followers. And that one person then shares it. So now my tweet has reached 2,207. The more I'm able to easily share my stuff online, the more free advertising I get. Yes? Are you able to... Um have this track of analytics so you can see how many people that, that how many eyeballs have actually seen your particular tweet. And do you mean specifically Google Analytics? Well Google Analytics, but is it also tied into tweet, the Twitter? Yes, Google Analytics can keep track of your traffic from just about any source, including Twitter. And Twitter itself has some built-in analytics also that we can look at. So the whole point of this is, is this working? Are people paying attention to me? That's more for the SEO class, but we do talk about it here too, in that we can see, are people clicking on this? Are people sharing it? Um, is the way I wrote this working as opposed to that way? So yes, all of these networks will give you these statistics, these analytics for you to make informed decisions. Can you see? With the Twitter um, usernames that have seen your 
I'm not sure if you can see simply who has seen it, but you definitely can see who has retweeted it, who has replied in that way, but I don't think they show you who has simply seen it, unless they've changed it recently. So you can share this if you want, but I'm just showing you, if your website doesn't have a way to share, you need to figure out how to do that. <coughs> our website does. This is, an, uh, this is a, our video about how to use Peach. Maybe you want your followers to know about it, so you'll click Tweet, and it will compose a tweet for you. Once you click that, you can, you know, you can still edit it here. It's going to share the, 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 the link literally, but you can still add some text to it and so forth. Question? It's not on our Twitter page, it's on our website, so you need to make sure you're on pmdinteractive.com, and then when you click on one of the articles, there'll be buttons there to share. And so, you're, if you did that, you shared, <coughs> you shared a link. Ideally, ideally, you're sharing your own work, your own article, your own product, your own pictures, your own stuff, ideally. Now, you can share other people's work. Um, this, people always ask this, and it's a somewhat difficult question to answer about can I share someone's work, can I share someone's picture? Difficult in that it really depends on who the originator of the content is. I would love it if you guys shared our post here. I would love it for you guys to share our picture, share our tweets. It's more free advertising for us. But what if I am an artist that makes money selling my paintings? I don't want you to give away, I don't want you to come to my site I took off the button to tweet, but you know that you can take the address and still copy and paste it. I can't prevent that. But I don't want people to share my work online. So some people don't want their stuff to get shared, some people do. You don't know if they do or don't until you do it, unfortunately. But really, you should think about don't share other people's work unless you know you can. And this really more applies to the intellectual property of like photos. If I took a, a great photo of San Diego and I'm selling it, I don't want people to share that for free. But if on my own I took a photo of San Diego and I like it and I want people to see it, great, share it. You don't know which of those two camps I'm in. So to avoid that, I think it's much better to err on the side of caution. Always share your own stuff, your own articles, your own photos, your own videos. If the website has a button to share on social media, they are probably telling you it's okay to share on social media. If you see, if you do a Google search, I'm going to go over to Google or any kind of search. I'm going to go over to, to Bing. And I'm going to search for cupcake photo. And I'm going to get 11 million results. This cupcake would be great for me to tweet and say, "Hey everyone, don't forget to, um, don't forget to, uh, don't forget uh, Valentine's is coming up, and we make the best Valentine's cupcakes." And we borrow that photo that is not ours. That's the bigger no-no. Don't just simply search something and use it as your own. You need to give credit for it. That's a lot of hassle. My short answer, don't search for any pictures online that are not yours. My short answer. My long answer is go to websites and search on websites that are full of stock images, free images, royalty-free images, images that are okay for you to use. Here's one of them, one of many. Pixabay.com. I don't have a good camera to take a photo of my cupcakes but I want a nice photo of a cupcake, I can go to pixabay.com or one of many other places, and I see here, free, high-quality photos. You're not going to get a million, 11 million results of cupcakes. You might only get 500. Okay, 500 f possible cupcakes for me to use. But the benefits outweigh the scarcity in that these photos are totally okay for you to use on your website, 
because it's such a gray area, it's still being redefined, copyrighted material online. You may never get into trouble for using someone else's photo. You may get into a lot of trouble. You get a, you get a letter from a lawyer that you owe $10,000 from using that photo. That can happen. A photo is worth $10,000, especially if someone's making their livelihood of it. Avoid that possibility. I'm very pessimistic in that aspect. Use stock images. Use royalty-free images. Those are some of the buzzwords. Go to a website where it's okay. Question. Um, I know if you used um, from Google Images, you can actually go into the usage rights and determine, and it will filter out the Google Images that are free to use, share, or modify, uh, even commercial. What's a usage right? How do I modify that? I just know how to use Google. I'm saying that glibly to say that a lot of people don't know that. I can show that, of course, people will take notes and people will forget. I'm going to say, avoid that limitation and yeah, you're going to find lots of great photos if you search the right way. A lot of us are going to forget to search the right way. Here's all you need. Go to a website where you are guaranteed that everything that shows up here is okay. Sometimes not okay photos do show up on the okay section of a Google search. I still am very pessimistic. I don't want to get in trouble. So this and many other kinds of websites. The keywords are royalty-free, stock images, public domain. What else? Royalty-free, stock image, public domain. Copyright free. There's also this one less common, copy left. There's copyright, copy left. Copy left often means you know, free for you to use. There's also another one called Creative Commons. It's confusing, isn't it? Why not go uh, to websites that specialize on this stuff, like Pixabay and others? You could do a Google search. Royalty free cupcake images and probably a hundred results, and you pick the perfect one, and oops, that one accidentally showed up on the, on, the, on the filtered results, and I'm in trouble. So go to Pixabay and other such sites, and that's better for you. Now, as I said, this is a four week long class. We talk about one network per day. I could talk about Twitter nonstop for eight weeks in a row. We're getting to the end of the day. Remember, we do have to wrap it up at 1245. I usually try to do some lab time at the end of the day. Um, we still have a lot to talk about, but remember, what we talk about one network can apply very directly to another network. I've only mentioned one tactic so far about getting followers. After you set up your profile and tweet a little bit, try to then go get other followers by you following. Expanding upon this a little bit, well, how do I find followers? You've got search at the top right. At the top right, I'm going to search cupcake or any keywords that I want. And I'm going to see a bunch of accounts related. I go here, John Dingell says, I want a cupcake. Okay. So, Whenever you see any account on Twitter, if you put your mouse on top of them, it'll tell you their photo, their bio, and their stats. Food Picks is so popular, 47,000 followers. And notice, full name is Food Picks, username is It's Food Picks. Someone took their name. The point of this is you're, you're searching for keywords, you're finding accounts. Um, so luckiest birthday boy here. Let's say I want this follower. So I hover my mouse over it and then I click the follow button. So what I'm doing here is with this follow button I've chosen to follow that account. I'm going to see what they are tweeting about. And that's one of the strategies. You're going to go in here and you're going to select some follows. You do have a limit. I believe it's 200 per day <coughs> or so because the spammers are going to follow, 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 follow. 
and try to get followers. So Twitter has a limit. I believe it's 200 and maybe less. So let's say your first week on Twitter, you're going to be tweeting some things here and there to no one, and you're going to be having a goal to follow 20 accounts every day. I come back tomorrow, I follow 20 more. Come back the next day, 20 more. You're going to see you're going to start to get some followers on that. Don't be disappointed when you followed 100 people and you only have two follow backs. Honestly, this method that I'm talking about here is not the most efficient. We will talk about more methods when we come back next time, and these methods apply to all the networks. But this is one method. Follow other accounts, you will get followers. How do I know I got a follower? Notifications. Something's going on here. I got a notification. Did anyone else get a little number up on that bell? So that means something happened on Twitter. Now I didn't plan this, so let's see what I got. I'm going to click on notifications. All supplement disk followed me. Who's this? If I put my mouse on it, it tells me all supplement disk is save on the top fitness supplement brands in the industry. Well, I don't know. That may be a good follower or not. They do have 97,000 followers. They must be doing something right, right? Not really. Followers are not the best indicator of a good account. They've only tweeted 21 times. <clears throat> they seem kind of spammy. So I got one follower. It's not a very legitimate one. They're not going to buy my cupcakes. But the more you follow accounts, you'll get notifications up here. John followed you. Janet replied to your tweet. Uh, Alton retweeted you. you know, you're going to see your activity on Twitter on this screen. As I said earlier, maybe I don't want this spam follower. If you care about that, what you want to do is you, if you click on the account of that follower, you will see a little gear, block, or report. If it's a really bad account, you can go to the account, click on the gear next to the account, to accidentally get followed, click on the gear, and you have either block or report. Don't worry about mute yet. But block them is then they are no longer following. They will not see your tweets anymore, and you will not see anything about them on Twitter anymore. If you choose report, you'll also tell Twitter, this is a spam account, this is a bad account. You have to fill in a few bubbles and such. But that's another way to deal with the bad guys on Twitter. Block them or report them. At a certain point, maybe that's not how you want to spend your time. I've gotten a few weird followers, but I'm still going to try my best to get real followers. So I'm not going to worry about bad followers. Yes? Can you explain hashtags? We're kind of running out of time for the day, but I will, I will be bringing it up next time. Um, as we as we wrap up for the moment, what I want to mention also is that the um, this fake account that I created, maybe I still don't want it. I would recommend keep the account for a little bit because we're going to talk about it again next time. But if you want to delete it, I'll mention today and next time. What you want to do is go up to the to your profile icon, settings. And then at the very bottom, deactivate my account. Can yes. You show how to change the user name? It's in here also. If you go into settings under right there, username. <laughs> so again, I would love to teach this class. You know, four hours. Okay. There's so much to learn about Twitter. We do have to wrap it up because we've got a class right after us. I haven't talked about hashtags and a lot of stuff. But hashtags are also prevalent on Google Plus and Pinterest and everywhere. And they're all the same kind of concept. When we come back next time, we'll talk about the next social network. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll learn some more. It all ties together. The big secret of social media is that once you learn it on one, you can apply it onto many of them. Ladies? You can apply it to everyone. If you learn something on one network, you can apply it to all the networks. We're out of time for the moment. Final question? Um, if I, so I have a few people to follow. If I send, when I send my first tweet, will they automatically get it or only no. if they choose to follow? They will only see your tweet when they follow you. Okay.
if you follow a bunch of people, you're not they're not gonna see your tweet. They have to follow you back. Okay. So as I said, I'm recording all these lectures. They're up online. Send me an email to uh, get those links. Uh, you can print the lecture. The, you can print this if you want. These notes that I wrote, I'm going to add them to the network folder. That's it for the moment. Don't forget your beverages here. And next time, no food and beverages in the room. We'll see you next time.